Hi again, it's Quilting Nerd, and today I wanted to talk to you about the influence of the quilting parameters, such as speed of your needle, so how fast it's going up and down. I know that some of you like really go at high speeds. And the other parameter is the speed at which you are moving your sandwich. Very often you ask me if I am using stitch regulator. I do not, even if with my machine I have the possibility. I simply like when the machine is working at constant speed. I tried the stitch regulator and I couldn't concentrate on quilting because the stitch regulator is adjusting the speed of the machine to the speed at which I'm moving the sandwich. And sometimes when I go into the uh, curves and then I am pivoting and changing the direction, I'm actually slowing down and that means the machine will actually slow down as well. And it throws me off, I'm losing concentration, I cannot use it. I am the constant speed kind of girl. I don't mind slight change in the stitch length. So I wanted to show you today some influence of what happens. And I will try to exaggerate. The point is that my hands adjust automatically to the speed of my needle. And I, but still I hope it will be some, you will have some few important moments or aha moments. So I have now very, I'm using very dark thread. I would never usually use on such white background, but it's about visibility. Uh, right now I set the speed for my sewing at the highest level, but I will try to move the sandwich the same way I'm always doing that, or maybe even a little bit slower. And let's see what happens. So full speed ahead. My needle goes up and down very fast and I'm moving my sandwich relatively slow. The stitches are actually very, very short and I don't know if you can see it here, but actually what happened is, let me try actually to zoom, maybe it will be better. No, it's not. What happens is here I pulled out some yellow thread and actually it's visible. The stitches are tiny, not practical because if something goes wrong you cannot pick the, those one out. And I'm also not sure if this is so healthy for the batting inside because you may tear it apart with such dense stitches. So also the risk of pulling the bobbin thread up because on the other side I'm actually using yellow because I want it this effect to be visible. So when I am pivoting here on those points, I am pulling my thread from the bottom up to the front. Also not good. And it's not looking good. Simply the quality of your quilting is not so good. How can I change that when I cannot regulate my speed? I have to move the fabric faster. So The speed is the same. I will push the pedal all the way down, but I will move the sandwich faster now.
is of course much better now because I moved the sandwich faster and it looks good. However, I would never do that if I'm quilting small patterns when I want to have more precision because you cannot be precise when you move the quilt sandwich faster. At least I cannot do that. And taking into account that many of you just start quilting, I would not recommend that simply. Anytime you change direction suddenly or you will be not sure about the movement, every moment of hesitation will be visible. So tiny stitches, risk of pulling out the bottom thread and damaging the batting. High speed of needle and a faster speed of moving the sandwich. You may have some hesitation errors. Uh, you cannot quilt too dense patterns, so this is okay when you are in a hurry and you are just throwing some very overall, some back and forth lines, that's not really visible. But if you will want to be more precise and I quilt something like feathers, I would not recommend this kind of settings combinations. So then what happens if we slow down all the way to the very low, to the lowest possible, or maybe not the lowest because then the needle hardly moves. So that's it. That's how slow my speed, uh, my needle moves at the lowest speed. And it's actually very useful if you want to baste some area. So for example, edge of your quilt. But for quilting, uh, I don't know what to do. I would have to make some micro movement and that's also not very good to control and you may have experienced some issues with actually I noticed that now if I am not moving my fabric much I have actually some uh, issues with my tension I'm also pulling out the bobbin thread that's why I am actually recommending to everybody setting the speed uh, limit or then if you cannot do that on your machine just try to press somewhere in the middle the, the, the pedal of your machine and that will allow you to move the sandwich at the speeds that are more controllable and achieve a nice and even length of your stitches. I would go even a little bit slower. fast enough that I can move my sandwich smooth under it but at the same time I don't have to rush with my hands only I can make slow and controlled movements and that will translate into how smooth my quilting line is and I will have time to react if I am approaching another quilt line which I don't want to cross or if I have, for example, a thicker seam somewhere here, where, which will impede my movement. Imagine if I would drive at high speed. I, I could either break my needle, that happened to me, 
or I would be completely thrown and I would end up with a very big stitch somewhere or I would break the thread. That would be very, it's usually very scary for me when I break a needle. So that's why I prefer to move my sandwich at lower speeds and also set the speed of my uh, needle to somewhere in the middle or press the pedal to such speeds that it's uh, manageable. That everything depends on the possibilities you have on your quilting machine. Now about the movement, because I also got some comments where you criticized your own quilting describing the stitches as jerky. First, that happens when you're a beginner quilter and it's absolutely normal. I also had my face of jerky stitches because I didn't know how fast to move my sandwich in relation to the movement of my needle. Also, it is important how you hold your hands. This is very important also for your shoulders. And uh, it doesn't matter if the sandwich is big or small, if you quilt on a domestic machine, it is very important to have space. So even with the small machine, where you do not have much space on this side, it is important to have to have space, at least on one side. That's why I like to use extension table when I quilt with my small sewing machine. And now, okay, this is, I let me zoom out a little bit more so you can see my hands. Let's concentrate on my hands. I hold it like this more or less. So my hands are flat. I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. My hands are flat. Uh, how much I can move them depends on the space. So if I have tiny space, I will have them closer and make smaller movements. If I have more space, then I can make larger movements. Stopping and adjusting your hands is important for the quality of your quilting. Now what you are seeing is that depending on the direction where I go, it's either my left hand or my right hand that it's pulling the sandwich. I'm not doing this. Yeah, and I'm not doing this. So right now I am if I am pushing with my left hand, this is then the fabric is bulging here. So if I am I'm using always one of the hands to pull the fabric. So now it's left hand pulling the fabric away. Now it's the right hand pulling the fabric away. The other one stabilizes. If I quilt up and down, both hands move at the same speed. Now right hand, left hand takes over, both left hands right, left hand all the time because I'm moving to the left. So when you go side to side, then you're kind of switching hands, which is more dominant. If you go up and down, then it's important that both hands are moving at the same speed. However, I'm always keeping the, at least the gloved part of my hands on the sandwich. Later on, once you will learn how to judge how the sandwich is moving, you can reduce a little bit the pressure because it's, you will learn how much is enough. But at the beginning, it is better when you have the hands simply on the sandwich and pay a little bit attention where you go. Why it is important? It's all about control. Because if I am touching only with my fingers, then it's very difficult. 
you see that that's what's happening when I try just to use my fingertips to quilt. That sometimes I'm doing that when I'm at the edge, but I don't like it because then my control is not as smooth as it should be. Then I have to accelerate the machine to have smaller stitches, but I have less control over the movement because I'm just using my fingertips. If I'm using my full hands, left, right, left, right and both hands I'm using the same way I'm placing my hands in the same way on both sides and that allows me to exert the same force when I'm pulling into one or the other direction. The same is back and forth. And because of that, I can move my sandwich with this fluidity that you see. This and of course the uh, suitable speed of my, of my needle. I can go slower, I can go faster. At this middle speeds, the influence of my stitch on my stitch length is relatively little and that's why you get the impression that my stitches are so good they are not perfect they there are there is variation in the stitch length especially if i really go deep into the groove but they are very similar so you cannot see the difference from the a little bit smaller to a little bit larger and that's the whole secret to it so place your hands in a good way Quilting gloves, whatever kind you have, is helping. And then it's simply, when you go side to side, it's about the change in this pressure you apply with your hands so one hand can pull more than the other. But only if you go side to side. If you make enough of such exercises, this will help you to get your shapes better, rounder or more square, depending on this, what's your effect. You will be able to keep the straight line uh, much better. There will be no not jerking from side to side when you will cool you will cool because for example, see now if I will just use one hand. It is much more difficult to keep this straight, yeah? I have to use the other hand to stabilize it and it's much better if I will pushing and pulling the fabric with both hands. So that's all about the technical details, it's long enough and I hope it will help you, that it will make some things more clear for you. I prefer much more when I can teach my students directly in person because then I can help them uh, by directly showing, explaining so they can try while I am uh, watching. But as we cannot do that, this is the next best thing. So happy quilting. I hope this will help uh, those of you who are really at the beginning of, the, of this adventure. And if you have questions, just write me a comment. Bye.